Hi, I'm Lynn Wise, and with me today is Adriano Bossoni. Um, today we're going to be talking about the update to the migrant crisis. Um, Adriano, Austria just recently implemented these border controls at the Italian border at Brenner Pass, um, and they've been kind of controversial. Um, why did they do this? It was basically a preemptive move by the Austrian government. Vienna is worried that as weather conditions improve, more people will try to take the central Mediterranean route that connects northern Africa with Italy, and that if Italy uh, sees more migrants coming in, there will be more people trying to move north and to cross the border and to go to places like France, Austria, and Germany. So it was basically uh, a political signal. It's the Austrian government telling the Italian government to be better at keeping the migrants in Italy and to prevent them from moving to the north. So we've seen that um, in this migrant um, crisis that Greece has been kind of the focal point of it. Um, is the focus moving to Italy? To a certain extent, it is in the sense that we have seen a reduction in the arrival of migrants to Greece because of the agreement between the EU and Turkey. And as the weather conditions improve in the Mediterranean, more people will try to cross the Mediterranean and make it to Italy. But it's a slightly different issue for different reasons. First, the numbers are not that large. Uh, around 150,000 people have made it to Greece in the first quarter of the year, whereas only 20,000 have made it to Italy this year. Uh, it's also different because in the Italian case, we are not necessarily talking about asylum seekers, but about economic migrants, people who are leaving countries like Nigeria, Somalia, Guinea, and they are trying to make it to, to Italy, but they don't necessarily qualify for asylum. And the third big difference, and this is important, is that unlike Turkey, in Libya, there isn't really a central government that is efficient and that has control of its borders and which you, a government which, with the one you can negotiate with. Uh, this makes an agreement between the EU and Libya much more complicated than the agreements that they already have with Turkey. So you mentioned economic migrants. Um, have we seen any kind of decrease in asylum seekers and uh, migrants fleeing the Middle East? Well, we have seen in the past few weeks that the arrival of people to Greece through Turkey has decreased. This is because of the agreements between the European Union and Turkey, but it's still too early to tell whether or not it will work long term because there are significant challenges ahead. To begin with, there are still doubts about the legality of the agreement. There are still doubts about the way Turkey treats, treats the, the, the people who return to, to Turkey. And there are also doubts on the European side. The, the European Union has promised Turkey many things in exchange for the immigration deal. Money should not be an issue. The European Union should be able to deliver the money that Turkey was promised. Uh, the resumption of accession talks should not be that complicated either. We, ha we saw that the they agreed to negotiate on a secondary policy chapter that is not particularly controversial. The complicated issue is that the EU also promised visa liberalization for Turkish citizens, and we could see countries in Europe dragging their feet on that issue. And the minute Turkey feels that it no longer benefits from, from its agreement with the EU, it could actually stop cooperating. So we've talked a lot about the humanitarian impact of this and how countries in Europe are trying um, to accommodate um, asylum seekers, refugees, and, and migrants. What about the economic impact of closing these borders, the Brenner Pass and others? So I think that the economic and the political impact of the migration crisis will linger. We will continue to see the repercussions. From a political point of view, we have seen that EU members have decided to take unilateral measures to close their borders without asking their neighbors to ignore plans and proposals by the European Commission. So this has hurt the already fragile political situation in Europe. And from an economic point of view, if we see uh, borders being closed or even border controls being introduced for longer periods, then we will see all sorts of problems from rising uh, transportation costs for companies 
operating in multiple countries to tourists and people working on, on, on different countries, having trouble uh, reaching their, 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 their work or reaching their, their place of vacation. So tourism could be hurt, trade could be hurt. Uh, so yes, the, the economic impact uh, will be multiple, but I am more worried about the political impact as the EU continues to fragment and nationalist sentiments continue to rise. Thank you, Adriano, for your coverage of this, and it's an issue we'll keep looking at closely. For more on immigration and Europe, please visit stratfor.com.